Hello, people of the internet. Uh, I am Anchises, or Euploid, or Deltoid, or Nomis, any of those. This is the first installment in what might be a series of sorts. This is Arena Budget. It's basically, I'm trying to set myself a challenge of like making decks that have none or very few of the rare wild cards required to craft them. So for this particular deck, uh, all you need, on the only rare wild cards you need are these. Um, you need the eight dual lands. Uh, if you don't have these, like craft them, you really need the ten dual lands. So if you have six total, like if you have three drunk catacomb and three watery grave, you can just go with like four demir gilgate and three of each of these. Don't play the memorial genius if you do that, but. Anyway, uh, you want the rare dual, rare dual lands, they're, they're more important than anything else. And and that's sort of like a secondary thing I'm trying to prove with this series, is that uh, the dual lands are more important than the other stuff. You can just get by with the uncommons and commons. So anyway, this is the mirror control. We're built around disinformation campaign. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and each opponent discards a card and then you're just trying to bounce it back to hand and play it again and bounce it back to hand and play it again. So basically the game plan is you want to fill your hand while emptying your opponent's hand. So basically what happens is they play some threats, you answer their threats while making them discard cards. So eventually you'll have cards in hand, your, opponent's, your opponent will have none, no, no cards in hand and hopefully nothing on board. So this that's the situation you want to set up and at that point because you, you're always threatening to bounce this and play it again, so your opponent is basically very motivated to always play out whatever he draws. So this gives you a massive information advantage, uh, since they're basically playing face up. It makes them just throw spells at your face, and it makes them play lands, like, you know, when, when people are in top deck mode, they sometimes just draw land and they don't play anything. So at that point you're kind of not safe to tap out, because they might have something. But once you're playing this information campaign, people often just don't even do that because you're just going to make them discard the land anyway. So this is the game plan. This is the most important card in the deck and this is your engine. This is the way, like, this is what makes the deck function. This is what gives you card advantage. This is what, like, this is really the way that you go about winning the game, even though this isn't what actually makes you win the game. This is what gets you there. So this is the most important card in the deck. This is the next most important card in the deck, the second most. So Thought Erasure, uh, two mana hand disruption spell. It can take any card and it surveils one. Surveilling one is kind of the kicker here. That that's the part that makes this card insane. So in my opinion, this is pretty much the best possible thing you can do on in turn two in the format. This lets you disrupt curves. It lets lets you take stuff out of hands that you don't have answers for, or like un uncounterable things like bane fires or niv misses or whatever. It's incredibly important for Demir, specifically, if you're playing only these two colors, because Demir cannot answer uh, artifacts or enchantments after they hit the if after they hit the board. That's restricted to the other colors. So uh, hand disruption, incredibly important, and especially for this build, because we don't have Vraska's Contempt, we can't answer Planeswalkers after they hit the table. So being able to get them out of your opponent's hand is incredibly important. So we have four Thought Erasure, and we have four Moment of Craving. You need four because this is the only life gain you're going to get with this deck building restriction, and you need this against Mono Red. Um, I like Cast Down quite a bit. It's good against Mono Red, it's good against most decks. Um, sometimes the format lines up in a way where Cast Down is not good. Like, it's not good against Mordu Angels, it's not good against Celestia Tokens. Um, it wasn't good against Arclight Phoenix, but Arclight Phoenix is not. It's not uh, popular and it is quite good against is it drakes negate uh, I like having the fifth counter spell we're playing for since the sabotage uh, this is quite a good spell especially when, when you're playing for campaigns and you need quite a bit of counter spells since you since your answers are uh, a little bit limited so a lot of people a lot of people would probably pay, play syncopate as the fifth counter spell here or the fifth and sixth but uh, for this particular archetype I don't really like syncopate because um, you're often just kind of tapping out on your turn, whether it be for like Thought Erasure or Disinformation Campaign or Cry the Canarium or Eldritch Reborn or Discovery or whatever. So if your opponent 
Like if you leave up two mana for for syncope for one, and then your opponent just plays around that, and like with four mana up, they play a three mana spell. You like your your two mana counter, your two mana syncope just didn't do anything. So and and that just happens a little bit too often for me to want to play syncope in this archetype. So I like negate. We're playing one blink of an eye. This is for the same reason as the thought erasure thing I was talking about earlier. If the if a problematic permanent hits the board, uh, you want to have an out. You want to have a way to get it off the battlefield and back to the hand where you can make your opponent discard it. Blink of an eye is a versatile spell. That thing with with getting problematic permanents back to hand is, is why you want it. But you can do other things with it too. Like you can you can bounce uh, if someone is trying to mortify your campaign. Like you can bounce that if you want to. Uh, you can respond to the third trigger of the Elder Born by bouncing it back to your hand, so the trigger resolves, but the but the enchantment doesn't go in the graveyard. You can just replay it. Uh, this is your only sweeper. This is the only sweeper you have access to with this rarity restriction. Uh, Ritual Soot is a lot better. It answers more more different situations, but Cry can like be situationally better than Ritual Soot. It's a lot better against Arcade Phoenix. Uh, it's a lot better against uh, Tanto Vanguard, but Ritualist is better. This is our Raskus Contempt replacement. It's good enough. Surveils too. Cost less if it targets like a Lyra or something. Uh, you can also play, if you prefer, you can play this. I think this is just slightly worse than Press of Fame. If you're worried about like rekindling Phoenix, you can you can go with this. I prefer Press of Fame for now. Aggro Predator. This is the creature. You need a creature. It's difficult to interact with, and it can like it can kill Carnage Tyrants or or Hydro Crises or whatever. It's not that good. The, the clock is slow, but it's good enough. These two cards, these are your win conditions: Elder Born and Nightmare Predator. Th this is the way you're gonna win most games. You're gonna steal your opponent's creature or Planeswalker, and you're gonna, and you're gonna win that game. After you have, after you've emptied your opponent's hand, you could, you're just gonna steal something. Like ideally, you wanna get value out of the first trigger, but sometimes you'll just have the game locked down, and you just wanna play this and get something out of the graveyard even without getting getting them to sacrifice something against some decks like some decks don't play any like any creatures or sometimes not even any planeswalkers so in that case you need cre you need a creature to be able to win the game so that's why we have this guy he's also pretty good against like mono red in that like against mono red you need to stabilize early and then you need to end the game because if you just let the game go on forever, they're just going to kill you eventually. Because every spell they draw deals three to you. So you need to end the game. Uh, and this is a way to do that. Um, apart from that, we have Discovery Dispersal. Uh, this card is actually quite important. It recurs your disinformation campaign and it digs up to three cards deep. Discovery does. A typical sequence for this deck, like early turns, is turn one tap land, turn two thought erasure, turn three disinformation campaign, and then turn four two mana removal spell, and then discovery. So you're removing a thing, you're digging three cards deep, and you're getting your disinformation campaign back, and then turn five you can like play an Elder Born or play campaign and a two mana removal spell or whatever. So those sequences are quite powerful. I just want to stress that the back half of this card is actually really important. This is like one of the few ways that you have to um, get rid of the permanents that you can interact with after they've hit the board. You can get rid of an Experimental Frenzy or a, an Immortal Sun or whatever. If your opponent is empty-handed, uh, you can just bounce it and they have to discard it immediately. So it just acts as, acts as straight removal against uh, whatever their highest CMC per per permanent is. That's it. Now we're going to look at some games. and. I'll show you a non-budget version after we after we're done with that. So here we are playing some uncommons and commons only Demir. Sounds fine. Thought issue is not as good on the play on the draw, I mean. But we'll make do. What are we tapped? So we're facing Esper. It's Esper mid-range. We have the sweeper in hand, so I'm not particularly worried about killing this right now. So I'm just going to lead with Thought Erasure. They're going to have three mana, so they can't even play anything. We do not have any sort of answer to this Lyra. We 
have an island in play, so it's going to be a while until they can cast the spell haunt. I'm just going to take the Lyra. Um, yeah, I think keeping this on top is fine, because um, next turn, assuming they just draw a land or something, they're just going to play a land, attack, and pass. So I will respond by playing campaign. Uh, they will probably modify it. So they need to discard, and they're going to modify it, yeah, exactly. Perfect, draw land. So I think I'm just going to keep campaigning them. Not particularly worried about these small creatures. So next turn I can I can even cry and recur discovery. Ah, okay, that makes it a, a little bit a little bit worse. This is where rituals would be real nice. So. I mean, I think I'm clearly going to cast down this, because it gets the Seraph out of their hand, which is super nice. I'm just going to start with that, see what I draw. I'm not sure that the play by our opponent to deputy this was good, because... I mean, I could have a ri I could have had a ritual suit or just anything. Anything would have been really bad for them there. I'm gonna go ahead and sweep here. Leave our opponent with nothing. Yeah, and they concede. That was a really good sequence for our deck. Even though ritual suit would have been more powerful than cry there, ended up being fine. So this hand only has two lands, but we have literally only two mana. Well, this is a four mana spell, really, but yeah, this is fine. Two lands is a bit light. I usually I usually don't like keeping two landers, but yeah, this is if this is mono red, this hand is just amazing. And yeah, we can find hopefully a land with this. Um, I can answer any of these creatures. I think I just want to take Lightning Strike. I mean, I can cast down this. I can Moment of Craving this. I don't have counter spells in hand, so I think I just like taking the Bolt. Uh, I don't want that. I want lands. Can you play the field? Yeah get a land, that's perfect, so I'm just going to cast down this now, so that they can't respond by playing instance. Now they're going to play the Pyromancer, or a Chain Warder, I guess, yeah, Pyromancer. And a Shock, probably. Or a Wizard's Lightning. Alrighty. This is a very burn-focused version of this deck. So, I am just going to moment of craving this. Um, I'm doing this on my turn, because if they have in hand or draw Wizard's Lightning, now they can cast it for one. Um, but either way, they're just going to do that. I'm just going to tap out for the Predator here. We have a win condition now. They're going to keep burning my face. Okay, I'm just gonna get in for three. Um, I'm tempted to cast Blink of an Eye on this. They'll respond by casting probably Lightning Strike. Because <laughs> otherwise I'd have to spend two Moment of Cravings.
Yeah, I'm just gonna tap out now to cast Blink of an Eye. Make them be a bit inefficient with their mana. So I'm taking four here. It's fine. Draw a card. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I'll play the field again. Just gonna get in here. So at this point I'm not even in a hurry to get rid of this field at all. I mean, if I play Mobile Craving twice, they're just did the same sequence will happen whether I Thought Erasure or Mobile Craving. So I'm just gonna do this, set up my draw. Hopefully they have, yeah, okay, so it's just that. Taking four, get rid of the shock. Um. Don't know exactly what I'm looking for here. Probably counter spells. Uh, I'm just gonna tap out for this. This is fine. I don't. I don't think I want more of the cantrips. Well. I think I'll keep it. Okay, that's that. W that was a reason to leave up moment of craving there, but we can just do this now. This time I am gonna I am gonna leave up moment. Okay, rewarded. So. Gonna play this. Get rid of the field, keep beating down. We have dispersal for that. So uh, I'm just gonna get in. And uh, I'm just gonna do this now. I, I mean, I would I would be doing this now. We're in the upkeep. It doesn't matter. Um, they have a vision of pirates. Yeah. I win next turn, so I'm just gonna take three. Uh, I was I was gonna get back to the issue of Pyromancer with the Shipborn and that's five. So welcome back to Dimir Uncommons and Commons only. This hand is somewhat slow, but turn two thought erasure is always very nice. We're on the draw though. So breeding pool could mean Sultan mid range, could mean the gate stack. So this is probably Band Nexus. They did not have a land to put in play. I'm gonna thought a Risher. See what we find. So it is in fact Band Nexus. Um, we don't have any answers to reclamation in the entire deck other than counter spells, but uh, the same goes for Teferi, and Teferi is th the way they win the game, so I am going to take the Teferi. I kind of like Eldest Reborn here, to be honest. Um, 
Maybe not though. I already have one in hand and they... Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna... I just want counter spells, really. I'm gonna campaign next turn. If they draw land, they'll be able to... Okay, so they're just gonna play... Okay, didn't even draw land, so this will be devastating for them. Okay, that's... That's interesting. So now they're gonna give the paradise. And next turn they'll play reclamation. That's perfect. So now I'll take the reclamation. Um. Yeah, I honestly think I do want another of those. Um, it's not as good as a sabotage or a negate. But it is something. Um, I don't think I want to play this discovery now. I probably should have played the memorial to be honest. Okay, so they're just going to end step chemisters. So I think what I'm going to do here is simply run out this Eldest Reborn. What I could do is campaign and then thought erasure. But I kind of just want to get their Teferi on my side of the battlefield as quickly as possible. And they're not going to be able to counter this. So this is fine. Hopefully they didn't draw Wilderness Reclamation or Teferi, that would be very unfortunate. So they did not. So now they have to discard. That's fine. Okay. So um I'm going to run out the campaign here. They'll probably use their insight. Yep. So we draw one of our win conditions, they discard the land. I really don't want to thought a Ranger here, because there's a good chance that this is the land as well. We're, we're just passing with Sinister Sabotage up. So I am going to counter this. Um, I don't like countering Nexus of Fate, usually. Um, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I shouldn't even be countering this. Because they have nothing, they have nothing going on. So yeah, I'm going to let this one go. Because th this is basically a 7 mana explore. Or 7 mana growth spiral. Yeah, this I am going to counter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't want... Yeah, okay. And they're done. I'm going to get a Teferi. That's how we do it. This hand is... Incredibly slow. We are on the play though, so I am going to keep... Uh, if this is mono red, I don't expect us to win. Okay, an island. This, can't, this could mean anything. Drawing a land was not what I wanted to see there. I really wanted some, some two mana play. An opt makes me think it's either is it Drake's or mono blue. So it's Izzet Drake's with a slow hand. I don't have a Terramander. 
I'm guessing they'll play a an Enigma Drake next. So playing the campaign here is very tempting. Um, problem is I don't have removal in hand. And this deck plays dive downs and spell pierces. So if I whiff on removal in these two draw steps and they resolve a threat and then untap, I might be in trouble. But at the same time, if they just play cantrips and stuff on their turn, I'll, I'll feel really bad about having held up sabotage, so I'm gonna play it. This answers Terramander, but not any, not either of the Drakes. So they're gonna play Enigma Drake, yeah. That's not quite what I was looking for, so I'll pass the turn. I'm kind of hoping they'll just play a Crackling Drake so that I can respond with Sinister Sabotage into Eldritch Reborn. That would be ideal. So they're just gonna hold up Spell Pierce, I'm guessing. So what I could do here is give them a two for one by playing Moment of Craving and Cry. But if they have Spell Pierce, that's bad. Um, so I think what I will do here is has the turn because if they tap out I'll be able to tell this reborn if I get to two more lands I'll be able to tell this reborn and negate so I'm gonna play it slow this position is kind of bad though so now they can play crackling Drake and hold up spell pierce I am going to counter here. Kind of hoping they spell pierce or something. I mean, obviously not. I need that land in order to have the ship one with negate. But I also need cast town of price of fame. So yeah, I'm going to keep it. Feels kind of bad, but I think it's fine. So we're just going to play the land and uh, we'll play campaign because I suspect they have spell pierce. Like th they clearly have either spell pierce or dive down. Uh, okay, I'll play two. If this builds up again, this is fa okay. That as this is fantastic. Okay, that was great. So now next turn, I mean, I'm gonna have negate up and anyway. But okay, so this is less good. But if I were to draw cast down, for example. Okay, so they're just gonna tap out entirely. If he bends two spells here, this is this is lethal. Even if I only even if I kill one. He okay, I don't think he saw that line. So I'm just gonna play Eldest Reborn here. He's gonna sack the Enigma Drake.
So I have a moment of craving. I can go up to 10. This card is dead anyway. So if I if I let them untap and I'm moment of craving, they might dive down. I'd be saving myself 4 damage instead of just 2. I think I'm going to just play it safe here. Uh, go up to 10 life because it will be difficult for them to put 4 spells in the bin. But 2 is very easy. So I'm just going to do this. This is very suboptimal, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. See, they're gonna get it up to 8 easily, but now if they draw shock, I'm dead anyway. I mean, I wasn't gonna beat shock anyway, but. Yeah. And so it goes. Not drawing removal there early was painful. So this hand is it's pretty good. Uh, kind of wish I had some direct removal, but this is fine. Start with... No, I can actually start... I cannot actually start with that. Uh, if I want to do turn 2 Thought Erasure. Huh. That actually makes his hand a lot worse. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go with the island. Tur turn 2 Drawn Catacomb Thought Erasure. Hopefully draw land. So our opponent is saying hello. We did draw the land. A rare occurrence in the world of Magic Arena. I'm gonna take History of Penalia, that card is scary. Do I want Thought Erasure? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, next turn I'm gonna play Campaign. They might respond by... Conclave Tribunaling it. Oh, they'll respond by playing a land and Skarmar Transparent, which puts them at 3 mana. So I guess this is fine. Yeah, okay, now I, I'm regretting this. They're just going to discard a land. Well, I know I was asking for land stack, but come on. Alright. And that's kind of my trust print. Yeah, they're just going to get in. So, if I draw Cry of the Conarium, I, don't, I won't have the correct mana to cast it. Let's begin with Discovery. Since we don't have any removal to cast anyway. There we go. sure I gain anything by casting Thought Erasure here other than the Surveil. Um, I'm just gonna play the Watery Grave tapped and pass the turn. So I'm taking 6, I'm taking 10 here, going to 3. That's pretty bad. I mean, I need to play this now. Genius tapped. 
I'm hoping my opponent just plays one creature. If they have land into heroic reinforcements, I lose. Play nothing. So I have six mana. I'm gonna play campaign. What? They're playing three colors? That's interesting. Um, so, if they top deck History of Benalia, I'm in trouble. So, I am actually just going to pass leaving up Sabotage. Now I'm gonna thought erasure. Interesting. I'm much more afraid of this card than of this card. But yeah, they don't even have the mana. I mean, I don't want lands, but I do want a swamp. I just, I only have two black sources. Did I play a land already? Uh, I think not. If I did, this is bad. I did, that's bad. Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this in hand for now. No, I'm not actually. What I was worried about was um, I don't want either of these. That's fine. What I was worried about was them resolving Dovin and um, and I wouldn't be able to respond to that with the Eldest Reborn. So they're just gonna give me the Dovin. That's fine. It's quite nice of them to do so. Uh, I need to leave Sinister Sabotage up in case or negate in case of reinforcements can't win quite yet. I need to counter this one. Okay, so they concede. Uh, I think they didn't really have much of a chance there. We kind of had the lock. We kind of had the lock uh, campaigning them every turn, so they need to play anything they draw. We had three. Ca we had two counters left in hand. I was going to play Elder Reborn next turn. Get back though in Bon or. Uh, then a down to one court or something went from there good game okay so i just want to quickly talk a little bit about how i would go about building a, a demure list with no budget restrictions first of all i would play at least one search for scanta i prefer two this is just the best card for control in standard apart from teferi it's amazing and you should play it in all of your control decks that include blue. I like playing two, but one is fine. I'd still be playing four moment craving, because red is just too spooky. Still for Thought Erasure, I would go down to three disinformation campaign, because we can play as Kanta and other engines. Don't think we need three. I also go down to three Sinister Sabotage. I just... I don't think this card is that good when you when you have more powerful answers so i'd be playing three sabotage one carnarium down from three and three ritual so this is up to four sweepers uh the reason for not playing four cry the carnarium is that it's just it is too narrow playing four just doesn't make any sense in my opinion but i would play three plus one like this no price of fame instead we're playing three contempts 
it's completely reasonable to go up to four of this. I just um, in the current meta, this is this. I feel like three is enough most of the time. I've been playing three Elder Reborn down from four because I'm putting in a Tesseret instead of the fourth copy. I like playing one big draw spell in these non-budget lists. So I think precognitive perception is actually perfect for the mirror because you're not, you know, like the sequence that you can do in like Jeskai control or Esper control where you pass with four mana open and you can you leave up contempt and Chemist's insight and Sinister sabotage or something. You, you're not really doing that kind of sequence that much in 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 the mirror. Often you're just tapping out. So I think precognitive precognitive perception is just perfect for this archetype. I like Tesseract quite a bit. Like there's no artifact synergy in this deck, but he gen he generates value. He's a he's he's a win condition. He can make blockers, and he's just kind of annoying to deal with for for your opponent if you're at parity. I'm going down to two discovery. I really like this card. I kind of would prefer to play three, but the way the list is configured right now, uh, I think two is is slightly better. Um, if you want to play three copies of this, I would just cut a land. Uh, I'm playing 25 lands in this list. Um, I have, so I'm playing nine dual lands and two memorials, same as the other list. One Demir Guildgate. So I think in this list, uh, this is still 17 of each. So, yeah, I just cut a land. Just cut one memorial for, or one swamp. For the, for discovery, and Dream Eater instead of uh, instead of the Nightville Predator. You could also play Doom Whisperer. I used to play this card in my Demir decks, but even though this is like a, sort of a tap out control archetype, sort of this card just doesn't do enough because you have because you're playing so few creatures. Uh, a lot of the time, if you haven't just emptied your opponent's hand, they're just gonna have removal in hand that they've not been able to use, and they'll just use it on this so you'll pay some life and surveil some but the enter the battlefield trigger of this card just makes it that much better than Doom Whisperer uh, for control specifically. That's it for this deck if you have any questions or comments please comment on the reddit thread or send me a pm on reddit don't comment here on youtube because I don't read my youtube comments I hope you enjoyed this video or this list. If you're just getting started with trying out control decks, I really recommend the mirror. It's a pretty simple archetype to start out with um, and it's really fun to play, for me at least. And I hope this video kind of showed you that you don't need all the mythics and rares in the world in order to play these control decks. I know that the, the current Esper lists, they take like millions, it feels like, uh, mythic and rare wildcards. But you don't need uh, all that jazz to be able to play control. So get out there and uh, make some people miserable.